Great to have you in. Very excited. Rich Armberger, former Patriot, joins us. People just loved when he came by last week on Friday. I must have had five or six texts from buddies. They were like, man, he is, I just love having him on. He really breaks down the game, and he picked. He picked the Titans uh, over Baltimore, so he loved the Titans over Baltimore, and he'll give us his thoughts on the Titans in Kansas City. Again, a high-powered offense with a unique talent at quarterback, and he loved Tennessee to go into Baltimore and win. Can they do it again it's great to have you in. Uh, so Green Bay at San Francisco, a game I think could get out of hand. I think Green Bay is a 9-7 and seven team masquerading as 14-3. and three. We see this all the time. You play in a bad division. Uh, you have an easier schedule. I said, when I look at Green Bay this year, the most impressive win they've had all year was in week two against Minnesota when they jumped out to a big lead. Seattle last week outscored them in the second half. Seattle was down two offensive linemen, third string center. Uh, uh, they had no running backs. It's not, and they struggled with them. They struggled to put them away. You see this all the time where you, you there's a team every year that makes the playoffs or every other year with a big shiny record, but they feel more nine and seven and ten and six than they do fourteen and three. Whereas San Francisco is is about a field goal and two plays away from being sixteen and one. And Aaron's never won a playoff game when he's a touchdown or more underdog. Um, he was talking about the game. He said, hey, the pressure's not on us. We're not supposed to win this week. We're supposed to get whacked. You know, I think if you look at this game, uh, they're definitely favored by, what, seven and a half, Tom? Is that right? So they're, you know, obviously expected to hold court and win, and uh, people know and are talking about how we played the last time. So I think if you look at pressure, the pressure's in a certain place, and, and, and we should be... Uh, we should be nice and loose. I don't think he's wrong. I generally think the pressure is on teams that are favored, and especially Kansas City and San Francisco. You're at home. You're favored big. I think he's probably right. I hope he's loose, and I hope he takes risks because he's become very risk-averse. Um, you know, it's interesting, though. He is a great talent, but in 13 years, he's had one great playoff run. It's very funny. When great teams or great players struggle in certain situations, there's always an answer for it. I'll give you an example. Roger Federer has won eight Wimbledons, uh, uh, six Australian Opens, five U.S. Opens, greatest male tennis player arguably for ever, but one French Open. What? Well, it's very explainable. Rafi Nadal is the greatest clay court player ever, and it's not close. <laughs> and he didn't have to play Rafi the one time he won the French Open. You can explain Federer's inability to win the French Open. He's got 20 Grand Slam events. He crushes. Er he can't win the French Open because it has happens to be one of his contemporary is the greatest clay court player ever, Rafi Nadal. I'll give you another example. Phil Mickelson's a top 10 golf talent of all time, maybe top five. It took him 13 years to win a major. It took him forever to win a major. He's only got five majors. And you're like, why? Well, because the greatest golfer arguably of all time was in his prime when Mickelson was in his prime. And for that 10 to 12 year prime in golf, because golf will wear you down physically. You start the wrists, the back, shoulders start falling apart, especially the wrist and the back in the middle of his prime. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Tiger Woods was the, he was the, a comet. He, he was winning everything. Um, the Colorado Rockies hit better at home historically. Why? It's the altitude. You can explain most stuff. Here's one that I have, it just doesn't make any sense. People think Aaron Rodgers is the greatest quarterback talent, talent ever. Not best quarterback, not most productive, but greatest talent. He's lousy on the road. In games as which he started, <laughs> he's a 500 road quarterback. Now think about that. His career road record. It's sub 500 in the playoffs. That I can kind of understand. You're facing the best teams. But look at notable quarterbacks on the road that have played in the same era. Tom Brady's 40 games over 500 on the road. Peyton Manning's 40 games over 500. Tony Romo's 37 and 22. Big Ben's way over 500. Russell Wilson's way over 500. Drew Brees at Dome quarterbacks way over 500. Aaron Rodgers is 500. He's a one game away from being 500. Why? How? That doesn't make any sense. My takeaway on the, even this year is passer ratings over 100 at home. It's below 90 on the road. Why? There's no Rafin at all here. There's no Tiger Woods here to explain it. Why? In fact, 
When is he best on the road? When he's comfortable at Detroit, at Chicago, at Minnesota. I think this is explainable because I think Aaron Rodgers is a little prickly. He's a conductor at home in Lambeau. Quiet, please, the scoreboard says. Aaron, when forced to be uncomfortable, struggles with it. Peyton didn't. Breeze doesn't. Romo doesn't. I think as Aaron is aged, he is playing safer football to protect his passer rating. I really believe this. And I think he's a guy that likes what he likes. He won't throw to you if he doesn't like you. He's a little prickly to deal with as a quarterback. And if you make him a little uncomfortable, he's not the same guy. He's not good with discomfort, which I don't think bodes well for Green Bay this weekend because the Niners defensive front is in the business of making everybody incredibly uncomfortable. So I think there is pressure on Aaron Rodgers this weekend. Deal with some discomfort, dude, because all your peers don't. Don't become 500 quarterbacks when they get out of their comfort zone. Breeze doesn't. Romo didn't. Ben doesn't. Peyton doesn't. Tom doesn't. You do. You are not a good road quarterback, and that's going to stick on you, and you can almost always explain great players with a weird stat. Nadal, why can't Federer win the French Open? Oh, Nadal, why, why didn't Phil win more majors? Oh, Tiger, why doesn't Aaron win on the road? He's an average quarterback on the road. His passer ratings average, wins loss average. Why? Plays it safe, doesn't like discomfort. So there is pressure on Aaron. There's real pressure on him. He's got to be he's got to learn to play with some discomfort. He's got to take some big swings. Otherwise, they're getting blown out. They're getting blown out in Santa Clara. Joy with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the herd line news. When Jimmy G was with the Patriots, he had a front row seat to Tom Brady's preparation for three playoff runs, two of which resulted in Super Bowl yeah. wins. And he shared what he took from his former teammate as he tries to lead the team to the Super Bowl himself. I haven't personally talked to him, uh, but just, you know, things that I took away from watching him go through it and everything is just, you know, the consistency that he had throughout the entire run, whatever it was, the first playoff game, the Super Bowl. He was very consistent between all of it, and uh, I think that just goes to your preparation throughout the week. If you're prepared going into the game, then you're going to play like that. It's kind of everything that Aaron Rodgers was talking about. I really feel like the teams that win in big moments are teams that go into it with this mentality. It's really preparation. Like, for example, the show. We could come here with no prep. And ad-lib our way through. And figure out, you know, we would get through three hours. It would be brutal, but we could figure it, it out. It would be brutal for our standards. It wouldn't be brutal compared to all our contemporaries. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, what you, that's coming from Colin, but... We prepare, and when you're prepared, you're not nervous. Like, when people ask, like, do, are, are you nervous that when you go on, on television? Like, no, because I'm very prepared. Right. I've done hours of prep. We've been prepping all day for this. Well, that's All night. Like, we come here knowing what we have to do. And that's the thing with New England is when they, when you do the same, I told my wife this the other day. My daughter was, uh, she, I, I told my daughter, I said, listen, you're in college. You, don't, you have inconsistent hours. Right. I said, pick an hour at night and try to go to bed within an hour of that target. So I said, 1030 at night. Because she, she'll, she'll stay up and do homework till 4. She'll screw around till 2 on the Internet. And I'm like, you have inconsistent hours. Adults that I've known that are successful, because she wants to be successful, have consistent lives. You can't be going to bed at 4 in the morning one morning, 7 at night, no. taking 6-hour naps consistency is a healthier way to live and it's also a way in which you get into patterns and you don't stress out my daughter can stress out and i'm like i think you stress out because you have these weird hours in your life create consistency i love routines so do i, I so do most so people boring but i'm like i know tomorrow i'm gonna wake up and do this there's no stress in your life i know exactly what kind of hours a day i have that are flexible and like that's that's what goes into these big games I feel like when you, what happened with, like, say, the Ravens and, you know, these meltdowns as you start getting so hyped up and, like, getting out of character, you know what to do. You know we've been doing this all season. Don't try and go for a 20-point play. It doesn't exist. Just do, just go play by play. You saw that with the Chiefs. No panic. We know what to do. This is what we do. We're prepared for this. Yep. It's possible that the other team might score a few touchdowns. Yeah. We'll be all right. 
So Derrick Henry has been bullying defenses during the Titans' incredible playoff run, and he had at least 30 carries in each playoff game so far, and he hopes to get the same workload against the Chiefs on Sunday. On Sunday. Well, I think I get in the rhythm uh, the more carries I get and get a better feel for the game as the game goes on. I think just stay focused, uh, take one game at a time, you know, as we're preparing and don't get too far ahead of ourselves. He is the first player in league history to have two games with over 180 rushing yards in the same postseason. In, in, in the passing era. <laughs> you know, the 70s, you'd, you'd think you'd go back to the 70s, 60s, you'd see those, like, Jim Brown numbers, but it's incredible. But think about this. He's averaging 20, during the regular season, 20.2 carries per game. He's averaging 32 carries per game in the postseason. Go back to his Alabama career. I remember in Alabama, in the big games, I mean, I think they handed to him once, like, 42 times. Like, he's a guy that Nick Saban generally doesn't wear out all his running backs, but he, he leaned on Derrick Henry. I remember that last year at Bammy was there. I mean, it was 35 carries in bit like LSU game, the championship games. And he they're going to lean on him on Sunday. And the Chiefs defense allowed 128.2 rushing yards per game during the regular season. Their defense, rush defense, ranked, ranked seventh worst in the league. I don't know. There we go. So it seems like their whole game plan is to stop him. Finally, the Bengals are expected to take Joe Burrow with the first pick in the draft this year, as we know. And his dad, Jimmy, says Joe would have no problem going to Cincinnati. You know, he's excited to, to even be in that conversation. And if the Bengals do draft him, he's going to be happy. And you've probably seen some of his interviews. He's very confident. And, you know, he'll look at it as a challenge. But uh, he'll be confident that eventually they can, they can win a lot of games there at Cincinnati. I know his dad is... Former, he coached in Canada, you know that? He, Yeah, he coached for a long time. Yeah. I know he's kind of trying to smooth over this rumblings that he's going to refuse to go to Cincinnati. But that just, like, having to say that alone kind of leans towards, like, maybe you should consider it. Listen, I'm not against Cincinnati I am. as a city no, 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 or no, a fan a base. Yeah, I don't know. And really, overall, like, as a team or organization, they've had some exciting great players, and it's not like they've... They're not the Browns. Like, they've... They've been managed to put some things together. Marvin Lewis had, uh, did not have a terrible run there. No. But I think everyone just feels like, uh, I would not be mad at him if he re if he refused to go there. Elway and Eli Manning said, I'm not going to your organization. Elway and Eli Manning, what, five Super Bowls? It's Hall like, Famers. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not, it's, I, I get it. He's from Ohio. Like, it wouldn't go over well for some people. But yeah. eventually, in the long run, it, it, it matters so much where you go in the beginning of your career as a quarterback. And look at Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Good stuff, Joy, with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping.